In this recording, we will discuss an introduction to muscles. You may remember from the histology recordings that there are three types of muscle tissue. We have skeletal muscle, cardiac muscle, and smooth muscle. These muscles have a few similarities and differences. They are all capable of generating force. We call this muscle tension. Okay. Other functions include creating movement, helping to maintain posture, assisting with the stabilization of joints, generating heat, and assisting with the regulation of flow of materials through hollow organs. As you can see in our image, we have some different appearances of skeletal, cardiac, and smooth muscle. Both your skeletal and your cardiac muscles have striations, okay? um, giving them the striped appearance while the smooth muscle has no striations. Skeletal muscles specifically are composed of long muscle cells arranged in parallel fashion to one another. I think they kind of look like long skinny striped straws stacked on top of each other. Um, some of these fibers can be quite long and extending nearly the entire length of the muscle itself. So think of your bicep muscle, your big arm muscle. Um, you could have muscle fibers within your bicep that run almost from your shoulder to your elbow. Like these can get pretty long. Skeletal muscles, um, we call those muscle fibers, okay, the muscle cells that make up the muscle, we just call them fibers because of the length and the appearance, they kind of look like um, the fibers of a, a fabric. These are multinucleated cells, okay, and they are capable of voluntary contractions, meaning you get to decide if and when and how to move your skeletal muscles. Most of your skeletal muscles are attached by connective tissue to the skeleton itself, where we can pull on the bones um, to produce movements. Cardiac muscle tissue is only located in the heart. Okay? These are also striated muscle cells, but instead of being long, uh, skinny fibers, these are short and highly branched. Um, they have one, maybe two nuclei per cells. Um, but the defining characteristic really of cardiac muscle is the presence of intercalated discs, these little squiggly lines, okay? These intercalated discs join adjacent cardiac muscle cells to one another. You will find gap junctions as well as desmosomes within these intercalated discs, uh, desmosomes being um, a modified tight junction. The gap junctions allow for rapid communication between adjacent cells, while the desmosomes allow, um, or well, I should say prevent, the muscle fibers from tearing apart during uh, muscle contraction. Okay, kind of holds everybody together. Um, both of these also work together to um, achieve coordinated muscle contraction. So we really like when your heart beats in a very particular way. The contractions from your heart are involuntarily controlled. Um, your heart actually just kind of beats all by itself, um, but we can kind of increase or decrease the rate of contraction by uh, activating your autonomic nervous system, okay? But you cannot actively think about, um, hey, heart beat faster and it just happened, okay? Unlike you can say, hey, I'm gonna lift my hand and you can lift your hand, okay? So this is involuntarily controlled. Smooth muscle, we have no striations here, which gives it the smooth appearance. These muscle cells are long and flat with a spindle-shaped appearance, meaning they're a little thicker in the middle and they get a little skinnier out to both sides. Okay. The nucleus is fairly large and centrally located. Um, you do only have one per cell. You find smooth muscle um, in your hollow organs, your eyes, uh, skin, uh, your glands, all kinds of places, but we are doing, again, involuntary contractions here. Many of your smooth muscle cells are also um, full of gap junctions between neighboring cells, which again allows for synchronized contraction, similar to your heart. Now, all of your muscle cells are capable of a couple of things. They have the property of contractility which means they can contract 
um, where the proteins within the cells draw closer together. Okay, we're going to spend a lot of time on muscle contraction. Okay. Your muscle cells are excitable, okay, which means they're able to respond to a stimulus. Okay, we're going to spend a lot of time talking about how to get that stimulus to achieve muscle contraction. They are conductive. Okay, conductivity is the ability to conduct electrical changes across your plasma membrane. Um, so you are quote unquote conducting a signal okay, across the plasma membrane of your muscle cells. So if we start a signal on the left side of your muscle cell, um, we can send it all the way to the right side of your muscle cell. Okay. Your muscles are extensible, okay, which means they can stretch without rupturing or breaking, which is kind of important. You don't want to break a muscle. That sounds terrible. And they are also uh, elastic -y, right? Elasticity is the ability to return to the original length after it's been sh uh, stretched. So you stretch out your band, you let go, and it goes back to the original shape. So do your muscles. Okay, so do your muscles. Now, muscle cells themselves, um, we call them myocytes, myo meaning muscle, site meaning cell. We have a few terms that are going to come up over and over and over again in the next several lectures uh, that are going to cover muscles, so we want to make sure we are familiar with our terminology here. So your cytoplasm, okay, within a myocyte, we call it the sarcoplasm. The plasma membrane of your myocytes, uh, we call that your sarcolemma, okay. and we have a modified endoplasmic reticulum, we call it the sarcoplasmic reticulum. Okay. You may or may not remember the endoplasmic reticulums um, of regular cells, you know, um, rough endoplasmic reticulum made proteins, smooth endoplasmic reticulum made lipids, guess what? Your sarcoplasmic reticulum doesn't do either of those things. <laughs> Brand new function here. Okay, we'll get to that here in just a second. Um, all of this kind of works together. We're going to form a web-like network um, surrounding the myofibrils okay, that make up your muscle. And in case you're wondering what a myofibril is, here we go. Your myofibrils okay, are the structures that make up overall muscle cells. So this picture is a myocyte, it's a muscle cell, and inside okay, we have some components. These large circular structures are your myofibrils. Okay. The blue stuff surrounding the myofibrils are your sarcoplasmic reticulums. Okay. Uh, we've got several mitochondria, you should know the function of that, got a good old nucleus. Okay. The sarcoplasma, remember, is the cytoplasm, and then the sarcolemma is the plasma membrane. Okay? So these myofibrils, okay? you have a ton of them. You can have hundreds or thousands of these myofibrils in every myocyte. Okay? Hundreds to thousands in every myocyte. Okay? You have thousands and thousands of thousands of myocytes in every muscle. Okay? These myofibrils are full of bundles of specialized proteins that allow for contraction. Okay? So the components of a myofibril, these specialized proteins, are how we achieve muscle contraction. Okay? We pointed out some of our other organelles like mitochondria and the nucleus. Okay, they're just kind of stuffed in there. Um, the arrangement of smooth muscle myofibrils is a little bit different than how cardiac and skeletal muscle uh, myofibrils are arranged. Um, that's what gives the appearance of striations in cardiac and skeletal muscles, but not striations in smooth muscle cells. We still have these same components, they're just arranged in a different way. So we have um, your skeletal muscles we have lots of fibers, okay, within the uh, skeletal muscle tissue itself. We are going to surround each individual skeletal muscle fiber with a 
the layer known as your endomycium. Endomycium, okay? You remember endo inside, mycia muscle, inside the muscle. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, your skeletal muscle fibers are, remember, thin and cylindrical. Okay, we talked about um, skinny striped straws. We did talk about they can also be very long, and some of them can actually be very thick. Okay. They can uh, reach up to about 30 centimeters, which is about a foot, so your $5 foot long. Okay. Then we start building a muscle itself, okay? So we're gonna take a ton of these little muscle fibers and we're gonna build a muscle. You ready? Here we go. So multiple muscle fibers, okay? Surrounded by their endomyciums, each one. Okay, remember each individual straw, okay, each individual fiber is wrapped in endomycium, okay? We're gonna take a bunch of your straws, a bunch of your fibers, and we're going to bundle them. We're going to form a fascicle, and that fascicle, we're going to hold it together with another layer of connective tissue. It's your paramycium, okay? Remember, peri means around, okay? We're then going to take several bundles of fascicles. We're going to group those together. We're going to wrap them in epimycium, okay? Epi, or kind of outside, to create an entire muscle, okay? So we got lots of new words. Okay, let's look at our picture. So, if we get down to the nitty gritty, we'll start small, okay? These myofilaments are the specialized proteins we talked about that composed myofibrils, okay? Myofibrils are found within a muscle fiber, okay? We have several muscle fibers, okay? We're going to wrap each individual muscle fiber in an endomycium. Okay. We take several muscle fibers wrapped in endomycium. We bundle them together to create a fascicle, which is wrapped in paramycium. Okay. And we take several fascicles and wrap them in epimycium to create a muscle. All right, so the paramycium and the epimycium are basically going to fuse together at the end of the muscle and become a tendon. Okay. Tendons uh, connect muscles to bone. Okay. The skeletal muscles um, are enclosed by a layer of thick connective tissue. We call this a fascia, okay, which anchors them to the surrounding tissues and holds groups of muscles together. And so you can have an additional layer of connective tissue, which you don't really see it in this image, but we've got another layer of connective tissue, we've got fascia, okay, which can help anchor muscles in place, um, attach them to other tissues, things like that, okay. So that is what your skeletal muscles are technically made of. Lots of little parts, okay. So that was a lot of new terms. A lot of images to process. Don't be afraid to go back and do this one one more time. Make sure you're really understanding these words because these words are going to get thrown out a lot. We're going to throw around myofilament a lot. We're going to throw around myofibril a lot, sarcolemma a lot. Okay, You're going to want to make sure you know what you're talking about.